All right, so now that we kind of finished up the rear end of the car to where I'm happy with it, like we got the rear wing done, we got the rear diffuser, now it's time to work on the front end and clean this up a little bit. So this is just kind of the, the placeholder splitter that I built to get the, the width right and kind of get everything sorted out. So this is just a piece of plywood. Um, I'm not going to make a full thickness carbon piece like this. That'd be really difficult and pretty expensive. So I'm just going to skin this piece of plywood with carbon and then have little winglets and kind of air diverters on the outside. As you can see, that's what the, the that is. I had to 3D scan it to get everything right in terms of like depth and dimensions. So I did that beforehand to make sure it's actually going to work. So yeah, now we just clean this up and turn this into more carbon fiber pieces. So stick around and see how it works out. All right, so these are the three pieces that I'm using to make the little winglets that are gonna go on the edge of the splitter to kind of take up the distance between the edge of the splitter and the bumper. Um, right now it's just a big open space and I don't really like how it looks. Um, so basically this is just kind of like a dive plane. Um, basically you can think of it as a canard, but with a lot more width than normal. Um, it's the same profile as the rear wing, which I think is an E. 634 or something along those lines it's a na it's a naca profile that you can get off the internet it's free it's well known um so basically we're gonna have this winglet and this is a center support bracket and what it does is it basically sits and holds it upright so i don't want to actually drill into the bumper so these side mounting holes line up with these side mounting holes and then these three will actually get bolted into the side of the splitter. So this will give you support on the outside edge, which then bolts to there. And then these will actually be the center supports. So between the two, the two support systems we have, basically mount and actually puts on one. So it should look something like this once it's all done. So this being the center support, this will get bolted to the splitter underneath. This on the outside, which will also get bolted to the outside of the splitter. And we'll have an assembly that looks like this, sort of, give or take. And it should give me some functional level of at least air diversion around the wheel. That's what this kind of curve is for, is to help push wind and air out and around the wheel. And this should help push down. Um, I'll also show the chassis mounts that I have for the splitter when I go to put it back on. Um, it's very simple doesn't have to be overly complicated. It just has to be strong enough and it holds me when I stand on it. So let's get to it. Let's make these carbon. And if you're gonna ask the questions of, did I run CFD on any of this? Absolutely not. Um, it works in my head, so it'll probably work at least in real life a little bit. Um, but yeah, CFD doesn't really do much for me because I don't have a model of the car and to do CFD correctly, you need to do the system as a whole. And that's not how I do things, so here we are. All right, so we have everything prepped now. So this is obviously the wooden splitter, the bumper's apart. The bumper is now just chilling there because I'm not worried about that. Um, so yeah, this is just a single piece of carbon that's going to go over across this. These are the T-nuts that actually mount it to the chassis mount. So I covered those up with blue painter's tape because I don't want epoxy to go into the threads and then muck up the threads. The T-nuts are pulled flush to the surface of that. So all we have to do is basically take this, laminate it all the way across, and that's good for me. The strength actually comes from the plywood. It's not coming from the carbon in this case, so I don't need that. And then we have, hold on. What, you want the ball? Go get it. Um, so now for the compression mold, this is the piece that will wrap that. But I also want to use, basically I use this as a template to figure out how much of the chop strand I need. So that's what the little Sharpie marks are for. So I can laminate the chop strand there, wrap it on the winglet, and then put it in the compression mold. And then we got all of our chop strand ready to go. And again, this is just literal sheets of carbon fiber cut up into little strands. And then we have our blank, like 12 weave sheet for the other side mount. So we got the 
the weave for the winglet, the weave for the side mount, the chop strand for both the side mount and the winglet, and the carbon sheet for the splitter itself. So we're in good shape and now we just need to actually do it. All right, so we got our forged winglet and side mount all done. Um, the side mount is just reinforced on one side because I wanted dimensional stack ups to be as well maintained as possible. Um, and it's just extra reinforcement. I'm really happy with how these came out for just using basically a piece of vacuum bagging material as a peel ply. There's some ripples in it, but a lot less than using like a drop cloth because it's a lot stiffer. Um, if I wanted to, I could sand that and finish it and it would turn out really, really nice because there's very little pores and very little waviness. So now it's on to the standard twill weave side. So same exact process as those, um, just with a weave pattern. So it'll actually be a lot easier and more repeatable with this because the layer thickness is always two, two pieces of carbon thick, whereas that is completely random and it's just a matter of how smooth I can do it by hand so let's do this stuff now. All right, so we got our tool weave side support and our tool weave winglet um, all laid up, ready to go. Uh, this is various ways to make it without using vacuum bags. So now we're gonna move on to laminating this because I still have some excess resin left over and it's probably not gonna be enough. I'm probably gonna have to make some more, but this will at least get me started. And so yeah, that's, that's next. And this is the last Piece that needs to be laminated with carbon and then it's just lots of trimming and some assembly. We got this whole thing laminated. This is another piece of the vacuum bagging that I'm using on the winglet just to help even it out and it traps excess resin in there to give it more flat finish, more reflective carbon finish. Uh, I have an imperfection in the weave, but this is a lot of carbon fiber and I wasn't about to cut it into another piece and then just have two giant pieces just waiting to do something with. So that's there. I don't care. Um, so yeah, now we got to wait for this stuff to cure and we'll check back when it is. All right, so we got the splitter and all of the ends laminated and they're fully cured now. So now we just need to trim them and then bring it back down here and we'll assemble it all.
All right, so we got the first side all kind of mocked up. Well, not mocked up. This is actually all installed. I just haven't put the, the holes in for this yet, but that's, that's what we're going after. And it looks very, very similar to what I modeled on the computer. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And then once we get both sides of these on, then we toss the bumper back on, then we actually get to see how it all looks together. So that's next. All right, so I put the, the little air diverters in in this position and I didn't really like how it looked and I much prefer just kind of this look. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take those out and leave those as they are and I have little, little brackets that once I get the bumper bolted into place, I'll put these under here and then drill a hole through the, the bumper and then just bolt it in. And then I actually won't run a bolt through the top. It just needs to hold support from the bottom. So that's all it's gonna do. And I can tuck it back under where basically you can't see it unless you're actually looking for it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bolt this down and we'll go from there. All right, so there it is. That's. We got the bumper mounted, we got the, the little dive planes all in place, we got the top sheet of carbon all laminated. So yeah, now it's time to just go put this thing on the car. Um, for this, all it is is just a bolt through and we have our little L bracket up in there and it's just connecting that to that so it's not just an unsupported span that's cantilevered off the edge. If that wasn't there, the thing would flop all over the place. But now that it's there, it's it's relatively sturdy in regards to everything else. So yeah, let's go put this back on the car and then I'll sh quick show how I did the chassis mounts for this. Um, you can't really do a DIY on chassis mounts. It's car dependent. So I'll just show you what I did and maybe that'll inspire you to do something on yours. All right, so this is really crude for a chassis mount, but it works really, really well. Um, it just connects to the tow points. So these were the factory little tow hooks, and then I just built this frame off of those. So with that, it's actually very, very strong. It's gusseted, it's good. I tigged everything, so it's fairly, fairly strong. Um, but then, I'll basically show you how strong it is once I get the splitter on.